excited to be here. This is kind of a unique opportunity to switch hats and take off my acoustician hat and abandon my lab mates next door and put on my photo ID <laughs> hat because this is kind of how I got my start into the marine mammal business, um, starting with photo ID catalogs in the Gulf of Mexico at Texas A&M. And then I spent a whole lot of time matching hump and rock flukes on the splash project that John C. mentioned. Um, in Hawaii at the Humpback Whale Sanctuary. So I'm excited to bring that expertise to San Diego and share with you now. So Bernardo, Bernardo left off at a great place for me to start from. And I'm going to take you from a now what scenario. You know how to take pictures. You know what's good camera-wise. So what do you do with those photos? So I'm going to take you from the field survey where you're out on the water and you gotten lots of photos, and what are those magical, mysterious steps to get to that beautiful, nicely organized OID catalog? Okay, so I'm going to talk a lot about software today, and uh, particularly one piece of software that I use, um, but you've heard a couple of other people mention different kinds, and ultimately, what you need is software that allows you to do these, what is it, six or seven steps that I've listed here. And if you're familiar with good old Photoshop and Excel, that's good enough. That may work for you. And um, RH was kind of kind enough to cover some of these for me. So I'm just going to kind of pass along on describing Finbase. And there is another one um, called Darwin. <coughs> But the software that I'm going to talk most about is ACDC. And the latest version is ACDC Pro version 5. It's what I know. It's what I was kind of raised up on and what I like. So that's what you get to hear about. <laughs> um, so we're going to just jump right in. Here's kind of the basic ACDC screen. And there's five different modes. Uh, the first one is the manage mode, and this is the one that allows you to just kind of view whatever images are located in the directory that you've selected. In the upper left-hand corner, there's a folders pane, and that's how you can kind of just navigate through the directories on your computer. mode is view mode is if you were to double click on an image in the manage mode this is the mode that allows you to get a more detailed look at your image you can get <coughs> the specifics in the exif data that were recorded by your digital camera and you can see along the bottom um, there's kind of a film strip that gives you an idea of the location of your image in that um, directory you may also notice I think maybe the like a few people in the front rows may only get to see the progress bar I have at the bottom of the screen that kind of takes you along the process that I'm going to talk about. Um, whereas you import and you organize, edit, and et cetera, your images. So you can follow along on the progress bar at the bottom to see where we are in the presentation. I'm going to skip over develop mode. I don't really use it, but I do a lot in edit mode. And this is where you get to rotate, crop, and adjust the exposure of your images. It's pretty darn easy in ACDC. That's another reason why I like the software. And then I'm going to skip over online mode. That just allows you to upload your images to the web, share with other people, or use it as a backup, backup and use it as you please. So jumping in, um, you start by importing your images from your camera. You can use card reader or whatever. Here's a great little import tool in ACDC highlighted here. Um, and you can import your images that way or whatever other way you choose to get your images onto your computer. This is how I like to set up my directories. For example, for the coastal tercyots following uh, coastal tercyots, a photo ID catalog. Um, that I manage here, and I have a directory for my daily images, and then inside that directory, I have other folders for each individual group of animals that we come across. Okay, and I believe it was John that mentioned batch renaming your photos that make them appropriate for the project that you're on. 
and the day that you capture these images. I like to use location like SD for San Diego and the date, and then I include group number, and then I keep the image number the same, pretty standard like John mentioned. And then within ACDC, the whole beauty of this program is that it has a cataloging system or a database to where you can create categories that allow you to organize your images. These are the five main categories that I use. I use a best and recite, a left and right dorsal, and then I assign a group number to each image. Okay. So moving on, I'm going to quickly show you how I edit images. Um, I start out by rotating my images, and I'm going to do mostly use mostly photos from our Tracing Apps project. And I start by getting all of my images to be in the same orientation. And for dolphin fins, I rotate the images so that the base of the dorsal fin becomes horizontal in the screen like that. So that's what we're left with there. Next, I crop out the background so that you can concentrate on the animal at hand. I leave a little bit of space to the top and bottom and left and right of each image. Um, some people prefer to leave the entire length of the body in the image. It kind of just depends on what analysis you're using for your project. Um, for this example, I'm just going to use mainly the dorsal fin here. So that's what we're left with after that crop. And then lastly, I use <coughs> the images to fix the exposure. And this is where you're using the light that was available to you. But it's a fine balance um, of adjustment here so that you're bringing out the contrast between the fin and the surrounding water. But you don't want to over adjust so that you're introducing noise to your image. So it's a fine balance and uh, just something to play around with. And just to show some love to a different species, and I'll just be honest, I love humpbacks. I'll do the same little sequence for a humpback fluke here, where we start with rotating it. And with humpbacks, maybe, yep, I rotate it so that the tips of the flukes are horizontal. So that's what we're left with after that rotation. I crop it so that the surrounding water gets out of the picture. We're left with that. And lastly, I just the, adjust the exposure so that that trailing edge, which is the end-all, be-all kind of um, sign that you're looking for in a match, is highlighted against the background water. And you bring out any additional scars and markings in the flick. OK, so sometimes you might have images where if we're focusing on that animal in the background, but there's something in the foreground blocking it, I'll just add a little bit <coughs> of text, like an X, just, just to show me that this is not the image or the animal that we're concentrating on. It's the animal in the background that you're supposed to be focusing your attention on. And if you have an image where there are two animals in it, I edit them crop, rotate, adjust the exposure for each individual in the frame. And I'll save it using the file name, but just with a little extension on it, like an A or a B, just to denote the differences between the two photos. But that way, you still get that original file number or image number with your animals. <coughs> and I think RH mentioned, too, like sometimes if you have an image that resembles the Loch Ness Monster, just get rid of it because it's going to be a waste of time to go through the entire process to um, try to analyze. Okay, so now that you've edited all of your photos, it's time to pick the best. And for this project, I pick the best left-facing dorsal and the best right-facing dorsal. You don't always have to do that. It's kind of personal preference or depends on, again, what analysis you're doing for your project. Um, but to do this, I open up two different screens of ACDC, and I'll put one animal on the left-hand side, and then I'll flip through the rest of that day's photos on the right-hand side, and I get rid of matches that, or I get rid of an uh, image that's a match, but I get rid of the image that's not as good as the other one. In this case, 
the left one is better because it has a better focus, and the right one's pretty crappy, so I would do with the right one. And I use those five different uh, kind of qualities that are listed in the middle of the screen here to help me judge the overall quality of an image. So I do this for all the lefts, then I do it for all the rights of the animals. In this case, the right hand image is better because it has better focus. There's a slightly better uh, lateral angle to it. It's a little bit more parallel to the boat, always important. <coughs> and then so I look at my image and I batch assign categories. I select all of my right facing, um, we'll start with the left and I'll assign them a little category that says these are the left images. Then I do the same for the right, because then I flip all the right-facing dorsals to look like left-facing dorsals. And this is kind of a personal preference. It helps in matching where all of your photos are facing the same way. Like, for example, this is not necessary for humpback flukes because they don't have a left and right side. Um, but dorsal fins, this is what I like to do for our catalog. And so I go through that matching process again. Now I want to find the best image between the left and right facing sides of an individual. And when I do, I take the better one and I assign, assign it a best category. And this will come in handy a little bit later on when you're doing an overall search through multiple days. And then overall, I assign all of the images, the group number, for example, this was from group two. <clears throat> and then if an animal happens to only have one side of the dorsal fin photograph, I'll, I'll give it a little note. And in this case, I use it, I put a little note in the ACDC metadata, and I say something consistent like, no right dorsal image for this animal, it's only a left facing fin, that's all we have for this image. Then after that, I take the images, the left and right image and I, of an animal, and I assign them ID, an ID, and I put this in the caption of the ACDC metadata. And you can use the details view of the manage mode of ACDC and sort by your captions to make sure that all of your individuals were given the correct ID number. This is kind of a way to double check yourself. And then I assign qualities to these animals, and I believe Greg is going to touch on this just a little bit more, but it's important to kind of standardize your data when you're doing an analysis so you, you can throw out the lesser quality images so that you're not biasing your analyses. And I usually use qualities of excellent, good, fair, and poor. And again, another way to double check yourself, if you sort by your qualities and then open up all of your excellent label images together, this is the way to make sure you are consistent in how you judge your images. And then I assign each animal a rating, one, two, three, four, five. For dolphins, this is based on the number of nicks and notches in the dorsal fins. Um, for humpback whales, for example, I would do it on color pigmentation, one being all white and five being all black, three being 50-50. For example, this has more than five notches, and for ACDC, there's not a rating code for smooth animals or like zero nicks and notches. So I go one through four for notches and then five for smooth animals. If anything has more than four notches, it still gets a four. And so this is where that is in the program. And for example, this animal a little bit subjective, I would give it a two because there's two notches. Again, you can sort in the details mode and check yourself to make sure that you were consistent in how you gave your animals a rating. <clears throat> okay, now here's the point where we take all of that information we stored in the database and attach it to the metadata of, this, of the images. And I put all of this information in the IPTC and it's just another way of storing metadata. For example, exit information is information that your camera records, like focal length and ISO. 
and IPTC information is whatever you want to put in there, like photographer or latitude and longitude or any extra information like that. So this is how I translate the ACDC database to the IPTC information because your ACDC database will let you sort and everything, but that information doesn't get attached to the image unless you put it in the metadata somehow. Okay, and then I do that by using presets that ACDC allows you to make, and I have my preset, and then when I get that information entered, all I have to do is add my photographer and the latitude, latitude and longitude for each group then all of that information gets attached to that image. That way, if you give that image to someone else, they'll still be able to look at that information. Then you can look at it all in the details view, make sure it all makes sense. And then, I take all of the best images that I found, put them in their own folder, just so they can be isolated. If you want to pull them out separately, you can do that or you can use a search function that I'll talk about here in just a second. And then, so hopefully you have more than just one day's worth of data, one group's worth of data, which I just covered here. And so if you set your ACDC up with those two screens, you can match multiple days against each other. When you find a match, you want to change your best image to have a best category and take the lesser quality image, give it a recite, and then change the IDs so that they match, and you kind of have a managed catalog. And a nice little uh, tool that is uh, found in ACDC is the uh, export file listing. This allows you to take whatever you have listed in details view and export it to a text file, which you can then import to Excel and have that as a data backup. You can use it to email to share with your collaborators or use it for your analyses or however you need. Here's kind of what that would look at look, look like if I took that data I just had in the previous screen. Now it's all nice and neat in an Excel file for you. Lastly, I mentioned the database search. For example, I mentioned quality is important and giving those animals a rating for when you do your analysis. So this search lets you take all of those qualities you assign to your images and pull up what you want from that. If you can say, I want the best images that have a quality of at least good or excellent, and animals that have at least two notches or more, you put that into ACDC search function, hit start, and it brings up all those images for you because you just spent that time cataloging them and that information is there for you. So with that, I hope you've been able to get an idea of all the steps that are needed to create your catalog and then with the obligatory cheesy dolphin closing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>